Well, welcome back. The House voting on four appropriations bills last night. Republicans passed funding for Homeland Security and the State Department and Pentagon. However, the bill funding agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration failed to advance after 27 Republicans joined all the Democrats in opposition. The House also overwhelmingly approved $300 million in new aid to Ukraine. 117 Republicans voted no on that bill. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy posted on X this, if President Biden stays on the sidelines while our border is destroyed day after day, the government will shut down. Joining me right now is Wisconsin Congressman Scott Fitzgerald, a member of the House Judiciary and Financial Services Committees. Congressman, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Thanks, Maria. Good to be with you. Yes. First, let's talk about finance and your role on the Financial Services Committee. What can you tell us about the uh, continuing resolution? Do you expect the government shutdown this weekend? Yeah, well, I guess we, we kind of hit our stride last night, um, felt good about the three bills that passed uh, all in a row. We knew we had issues with ag uh, and obviously with the number of Republicans that weren't able to get there. Um, it's something that has to be revisited in the Rules Committee. But uh, yeah, I'm anticipating we'll be here on Saturday voting on a CR that includes uh, all the provisions that were part of our border bill earlier in the year. So it's, it's the one thing I think that is also uh, apparently receiving some discussion over in the Senate. So maybe this is the common ground that we need to kind of move forward. So what, what is the holdup? Is it the money to Ukraine? Is it money uh, toward uh, the border? Because I know it's, it's not really money that you're looking for for the border, but really policy changes, right? That's right. I mean, if, if you look at H.R. 2 and, and what was included, and you're well aware of it, you've been covering the border for some time, uh, there, there's just this high level of frustration that we can't get uh, any movement on that front. And then to, to complicate it, uh, further complicate it, you've got the Ukraine money. I did not support it uh, last night. Uh, there's, um, again, people can't get the information they need. Uh, to really make, I think, uh, an intelligent decision on whether or not to keep moving dollars over there. So uh, that, that group, including myself, I think are uh, becoming more skeptical about, uh, you know, what's coming out of the Pentagon and certainly some of the information that we're getting out of uh, armed services. Yeah, I, I understand. I mean, I know that that $300 million uh, that we were talking about was simply to train Ukrainian soldiers, right, for the U.S. to be training Ukraine uh, soldiers. Do we know where the other $113 billion has gone to U Ukraine? What is it being used for? Are you not getting that accounting? No, I think if you're, the, if you're a rank-and-file member right now and you ask about Ukraine, uh, there's uh, certainly a discussion about procurement and just what is DOD doing with the money, how are they being used uh, in relation to weapon systems and munitions. I mean, there's a lot of kind of uh, very, um, you know, I, I would say uh, non-defined descriptions about where the money's going. And yeah. uh, it's, it's very difficult for us to kind of build a coalition at this point. So you'll be there all weekend voting on uh, trying to pass more bills to, to lessen the burden should we see a, a shutdown. Maybe we'll see a partial government shutdown. Is that what you're expecting? Well, we hope whatever happens, it's short, and that we can kind of get back to doing our regular business. We've got a lot of other things on our plate, obviously. Um, so the quicker we can move through these appropriation bills and get to the point where, you know, we feel comfortable, I think, where the members feel comfortable actually going and starting to negotiate with the Senate, the quicker that can happen, the better off it is for all of us right now. And, of course, one of those things on your plate is the House holding its first impeachment inquiry hearing yesterday. Democrats on the Oversight right. Committee attempted to defend Joe Biden and his family. They're claiming that this is all about Trump. Watch this. But I will tell you what the president has been guilty of. He has unfortunately been guilty of loving his child unconditionally, and that is the only evidence that they have brought forward. And honestly, I hope and pray that my parents love me half as much as he loves his child. So what is this hearing actually about? It's a campaign strategy. It is this committee and loyalists of Donald Trump doing his bidding to bolster his chances of winning back the White House and securing their majority in the next election. Congressman, what do you make of the response from Democrats? 
Well, they've got their talking points. We're not only hearing it in oversight, but it's happening in the judiciary. It doesn't matter what the topic is. All they want to talk about is Donald J. Trump. Uh, what I would say is the big news that came out of oversight yesterday, and I talked to Congressman Comer last night about it at length, is that they're issuing the subpoenas for both Hunter and James Biden. I, I think that's, that's kind of the big news that came out of everything that they were able to gather yesterday. So what, what will that subpoena do? We heard James Comer issuing the subpoenas for their personal and ba business bank records for Hunter and Jim Biden. The Oversight Committee also released new, uh, newly surfaced WhatsApp messages that Hunter sent to his uncle James Biden back in 2018. And we've got that up here on the screen. And he writes, you've been drawn into something possibly for the purpose of protecting dad. You know, I, I think it's really remarkable when you look at that $260,000 payment that we've been talking about from China. China sends Hunter uh, or, or Joe, we don't know, $260,000, but they send it to Joe Biden's Delaware home. At the time, uh, Hunter's living in California. This is 2019. I mean, this is not, you know, years ago in 2014. That, that $260,000 was 2019. So what do you think is the most revealing uh, of all of the evidence that you've seen so far? Well, I think if you go back to what Congressman Jordan has been uh, relaying to the American people really for about two months now, it's that Burisma timeline, right? Um, if, if, it's, if you put those pieces together and kind of line them up, it's very clear that the emails kind of fill in the gaps on this. So um, Comer and Jordan are going to continue to do the subpoenas because the bank records are kind of what fills in the holes right now. And I, that's really, why yeah. I think it's tedious. It's just tedious, some of the stuff. And with the, the talking points that the Democrats have, sometimes you, you just shake your head when you're in one of these hearings. It's just ridiculous. But the fact of the matter is, I think we're getting to the point where we're actually going to bring this over to judiciary. And, uh, you know, then there'll be uh, an impeachment proceeding. I mean, do you really think you're going to get those bank records? How long before you get the bank records do you expect? No, Congressman Comer has been uh, diligent, and it has been resulting in, you know, the actual black and white documents that are needed uh, to kind of connect the dots here. Yeah, it's, it's okay. happening, and I think we'll continue right. to. Congressman, thank you very much. We're going to be watching your work. Congressman Fitzgerald, stay with us. We'll be right back.